In this tutorial, I will show you how to work with AwareIAM queries. An AwareIAM query is a concept that combines retrieval of data with the presentation of the retrieved data. First, you need to define conditions of your data retrieval, and then specify how retrieved data will be presented to the user. Here I have a custom object from the previous tutorials, and we will define a query that will retrieve existing customers based on some conditions. Defining a query starts with defining a business object that the query will be looking for. Customer in our case. Conditions of, da of data retrieval are defined in this area here. If we do not define any conditions, all instances of the object will be retrieved by the query. Let's retrieve customers whose birthday is after a certain date, for example. So the condition will be customer's date of birth greater than certain value. If I click on the attribute expression column, I can select any attribute of the customer object. In this case, date of birth. I select crit criteria in the second column and specify the value in the third column. Note that I can specify a specific date here, but we will make it more interesting and practical and let the user specify the date that he wants at runtime. Note that the last value displayed here is asked at runtime. This is what we will choose. We can add another condition to our query if we want. For example, only retrieve customers with the name John. By default, a where I am linked both condition using and operator, but you can choose or as well. We will make it simple and only include one condition in our query. Let's give a name to our query and see how it looks to the end user. Before I test my query though, I will add a menu operation to allow users to run our query directly. You can watch a video tutorial about visual perspectives for more details on how to define menu items. Now I can test my query. We'll log into our system using the browser. I have already added a number of customers to our system, so here I will just run the query. As you can see, because we have added our condition that asks for, for the date of birth at runtime, where I am automatically asks the user to enter the date. If I leave the date blank, all customers will be displayed. If I specify the date, only the customers born after this date will be retrieved. Note that the query returns the data in a grid, which consists of columns, where each column contains a value of a particular attribute of the object we are retrieving. The columns that we see are some default columns that are where I am picked automatically. Later in this tutorial, I will show you how to define which attributes of where I am will show here. Let's now go back to the configuration tool. Not all queries can be specified using conditions on this screen, which is also called the simple form. Some queries can be more complex, in which case you should use the rule form, where you can define conditions of the query using the find action of the rule language which is a lot more powerful. Here we can see how, a, how our simple query is translated into the find action. For really sophisticated SQL queries, you can also use SQL stored procedures here. 
Going back to the simple form, here we can also specify sorting for our queries. We can get it to retrieve top few results only. But the interesting option I wanted to show you is specifying query conditions using object forms. Rather than specifying a condition that asks the user to enter values at runtime, I can define a form for the object. When the query is run, a where I am will display this form to the user. Any values that the user enters in the form will be used as criteria for search. Let's look at an example. I have defined a form for our object. that only displays certain attributes, those that are relevant for search. I will now delete our condition and use this form instead for our query. Let's see how our query looks now. When we go to the browser, and run our query, we can see that now a where aim displays the form of our, of our object. If I don't enter any values, all customers will be retrieved. If I enter John, only customers with the name John will be retrieved. If I select female, only female customers will be retrieved. And if I enter both John and female, nothing will be retrieved, obviously. Note that form search is quite powerful and it is possible to enter equality, non-equality conditions, starts with, contains and other expressions. For example, to find customers whose name starts with J, I can enter starts with J. For a full list of supported expressions, the user can look up this help window. Let's now look in more detail at how we can control how the data is presented to the user. This is done in the dialog that is displayed when we click on the Details button here. There are several forms of presenting query results to the user. Standard, Custom, Calendar Scheduler, Chart and Gantt. In this tutorial, we will lo only look at the standard form of query representation, where data is displayed as a grid, similar to the one we saw for our custom object. Other forms of query representation are covered in other tutorials. As I mentioned before, the standard grid shows attributes of the object as columns. In this table here, we can specify which attributes of the object we want our grid to show and in which order. Let's just show first name, last name, date of birth and photo. Here we can also define operations that the user can perform with, it, with each item in the grid. By default, a where I am has automatically added the edit operation that allows the user to navigate to the form for each item. Let's also define the delete operation that allows the user to delete the item. This operation will allow the user to click on the delete icon next to each item and delete it individually. We would also like the user to be able to select multiple items and delete them at once by clicking on a button in the header of the query. To do this, we go to Panel Operations Buttons and define the Delete Panel operation. When we add the operation, when we select its type and specify that the operation is applicable to multiple items, to indicate that the user can select multiple items at once. 
Let's see how this looks. We'll log into the system and run our query. As you can see, now where I am only displays the attributes that we have defined. It also automatically added the edit and delete icons representing item operations next to each record. When the user clicks on the edit icon, the form of the record is displayed. Clicking the delete icon deletes the corresponding record. AwareAIM has also added the delete button above the list and checkboxes to allow the user to delete multiple items at once. Another interesting option in the display properties of the query is inline editing. If we turn it on, the user will be able to modify the values returned by the query in place. Let's do it. And allow all columns that we show except photo to be editable. Let, let's see how this looks. We run our query again. The user can now click on the cell and edit the value in place. As soon as the user goes to the next row, the value is saved. There are many other options that you can use to display query results. For example, you can change the width of the column. You can change its label. You can group columns. Display summaries for columns. You can use item rules to display items in different colors. Filters to allow users to quickly filter query results. You can assign operations to be performed when a row is expanded. You can group query results by some attribute. Here the list of issues is grouped by the priority attribute. And you can also do quite a few other things. Drag and drop, order refresh, user tools, to name just a few. The query presentation tutorial explains some of these options in more detail. Please also make sure that you read the user guide and the how-to documents for more details about queries.